subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Leela Bakore tutorial. In the previous part, we talked about the general characteristic features of cartilaginous fishes. And now we'll continue with the same, that is we'll take up some other systems. So we are talking of cartilaginous fishes and we already talked about the digestive system, the method of respiration and also the circulatory system. This we have already talked of. So now let us take the other systems. The next one that we are talking of is excretory system. They are ureotelic. This is very important. When we compare cartilaginous fishes and bony fishes, this is a very important uh, comparative uh, point. The next is nervous system. Nervous system, they have, cartilaginous fishes have 10 pairs of cranial nerves. And this is a comparative point between uh, fishes, amphibians, reptiles and birds and mammals. So 10 pairs of cranial nerves are there and they have very large cerebellum and olfactory lobes. We know the function of these two parts. Cerebellum is responsible for balancing equilibrium and olfactory lobes are responsible for the sense of smell. So this indicates the large size cerebellum and olfactory lobes, they indicate that these fishes, they depend on their sense of smell more than any other sense and balancing of their body while they're swimming is very important. Now, when we are talking of nervous system, let us also talk of, talk of sense organs. Cartilaginous fishes have only inner ear and in the inner ear, they have three semicircular canals. And semicircular canals have sense organs which are responsible for this equilibrium and balancing. This is one important thing. They have lateral line organs. These are also sensory. When two fishes, they swim together, they never bang on each other, they never collide with each other. The reason is on the lateral line of their body, there is a chain of these sense organs and that is why they are known as lateral line organs. These are rheoreceptors. Rheoreceptors means they are able to detect any change in the water current. So if two fishes are swimming together and if one fish comes closer to the other one, the water which is present between the two, it exerts pressure on those lateral line organs. And that is what is detected and that is why they are able to change their position so that they do not collide with each other. One more very important sense organ which is present at the tip of their snout is known as ampulla of Lorenzini. And this is again a sense organ which is uh, able to detect any temperature change. So it is thermoreceptor. So they have rheoreceptors, they have thermoreceptors plus they have large cerebellum and three semicircular canals which help them in balancing their body in a proper manner. So nervous system, sense organs. Now let us talk of body temperature. They are cold blooded that is poikilotherms which we commonly know as cold blooded animals. We will talk about the body shape 
also, but before that we will talk of reproduction. They are mainly oviparous, mainly oviparous. Oviparous means they lay eggs. These are maximum cartilaginous fishes are like this, but some of them are oviviparous. They lay eggs, but the eggs are kept inside the body and when the eggs hatch, what comes out of the female uh, fish, fish's body is the young animal. So it appears as if they are viviparous. The example of this is scoliodon, which is commonly known as dogfish. And some cartilaginous fishes are viviparous. Here we take the example of zygima and Pistis. These are viviparous fishes. That means they give birth to young ones. Now let us talk about one more important aspect that is their body shape. There are two shapes which are common. One is laterally compressed and the other is dorsoventrally compressed. And based on this we call them sharks and rays and we will compare these on some points. So sharks, if we talk about the shape of their body, they are laterally compressed that means sideways. So they, we, uh, their shape is written as laterally compressed and rays are flat. So we call them dorsoventrally compressed. Then position of gill slits. Here we'll try to draw a simple diagram again so that we remember what all structures are there. This was the shark which we made here the eyes, gill slits are exposed and they have unpaired dorsal and ventral fins and the caudal fins, they are heterocircle plus paired pectoral fins are there and pelvic fins are also there. So when we see a shark, we see the gill slits on the lateral side. Now if we draw an array, so the pectoral fins are spread out like this. The body has a tail like structure. So this wide part is the pectoral fin or these are paired pectoral fins. Dorsal fins are highly reduced and this is the tail fin. Again, this is pectoral and they would also have these pelvic fins which are also paired, pelvic fins. So these are the dorsal fins which are unpaired. This is the tail fin which is unpaired. These are characteristic features of cartilaginous fishes. Now the eyes are here and the gill slits are ventral. We don't see the gill slits from the dorsal side. So in this case, gill slits are lateral and here the gill slits are ventral. We don't see it from the top. The next structure is spiracle. If you remember when we were talking about the general characteristic features, we said they have five to seven pairs of gill slits and first gill slit is reduced into a tiny opening which is called spiracle. So here the spiracle is small and lateral small and lateral. Whereas in case of rays, just beneath the eye, we find large spiracle. So spiracle is large and dorsal. This is again a very important characteristic feature apart from 
the shape. Now, a few more things that we need to understand about these. Where do they feed? Sharks, this is the feeding part. The sharks are surface feeders and the rays are benthic. That means they remain at the bottom of the ocean. They are all marine. So sharks will be seen on the surface of the ocean and the rays would be benthic. That means they are at the bottom level. Now let us take some examples of uh, sharks. Scoliodon, which is commonly known as the dogfish. Zygena. And here we will take the example of torpedo, which is commonly known as electric ray. The diagram which we have made here is of torpedo only electric ray. And so we will also draw the structure here, large structures which are actually the electric organ. They generate electric current. This is their defense mechanism. So this is the electric organ. They are also paired structures. So torpedo type uh, are called the rays which are dorsoventrally flattened and which are laterally flattened, they are called the sharks. So we divide the cartilaginous fishes into two main categories on the basis of their body shape as sharks or rays. So this is the characteristic feature or these are rather the systems which we were to discuss and how we compare or identify sharks and rays. Now in the next part, we'll take up some important examples and discuss special features of those fishes.